something fell out of the sky and landed with a thud on the riverbank south of Needles. That's when I saw the bright turquoise blue green flame and it was coming directly straight down out of the sky. The choppers arrived only 17 minutes after the object crashed, and a giant sky crane was used to haul the object into the air and away toward the north. The fact that there were people here the next day, almost like a team, it seemed like, that they were doing either some sort of uh, cleanup. Residents say after the choppers came the men in black. Was it a spy plane or a drone or something more exotic? And of course, we're calling it a UFO. It is still unidentified. Figuring out what it was is still a tall order. The 2008 Needles UFO crash had everything. It had local eyewitness accounts. It had scientists in the local military that came in, as well as an actual crash site, a place that we could physically go and see if we could find anything that others left there and forgot. So we headed down, set out on our investigation of Needles. So the first thing we did when we arrived in Needles, California, is met with Frank Costigan. He introduced us to a local surveyor who had actually surveyed the crash site. So we got maps and the location of the crash site. And so what we did is we took our tools and our metal detectors and we headed down to the crash site. It was a very warm day in Needles. It was July. When we got out of the, our vehicle, we had to walk about a quarter of a mile through sand dunes in the heat, the wind hitting us in the face, the sand hitting our eyes, carrying all this equipment, trying to find any sign of, of people being there, uh, you know, military uh, scraps, uh, buttons, uh, anything that would show, like, signs that there were people there, because there was nothing. It was just an open, big, empty sand field, basically. We spent hours out in the middle of the sand, in the desert, looking for anything at all that we could find. I noticed something, a little buzz in the metal detector, and when I looked down, the gauge went up. I said, bro, come check this out. We got a signal of something. There's something here. It's not saying what kind of metal it is, but it's saying there's something here. I got down my hands and knees, and I dug out. And uh, we found something about a foot and a half deep. And what we pulled out of the ground was totally unexpected, not at all where it should have been. There was no broken down cars. There was no RVs. There was no, no trash anywhere. It was just dead desert. When I pulled a piece of metal out of the ground, I was like, what the heck is this? It was slick. It was kind of uh, a little slimy, just a little bit from being in the dirt. It was a little bit shiny with a, like a um, yellow sheen, yellow on, sheen on it. And we noticed this strange bubbling on it. This weird bubble on the metal that don't know how it would even be there because there was no char marks on the metal. It also looks as though it's been ripped off or exploded off of something because there's rip marks through the metal. There's no cutting. What it looks like it's been a piece of metal through like a tragic event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's exploded off of something and heated to a very high temperature and cooled very quickly with no scorch marks or anything like that. This piece of metal was unlike anything I've ever seen before. 